Hello, everyone. All right, I see we have seven people that are here. So uh, please uh, mute yourself. And what we will do is welcome. Um, we will have questions for later. Um, I hope you all can hear me. It looks like uh, you can. And uh, save your question for later. I'll, I'll make this uh, not too long, but it's um, so welcome. So I'm gonna see if I can kind of start and then we have nine uh, people now. Great, so uh, thank you for joining me uh, today. And um, as you can see, you, know, you can see the background. I was hoping I'll be at the beach. So I had the virtual background of the beach in Cancun where I was at in January as uh, my virtual background. And so thank you for joining me on a Sunday afternoon um, at, at this really surreal uh, uncertain time that we're facing and um, I just feel like I needed to connect with uh, my patient, my friends, and my colleague, and talk about uh, COVID and uh, updates and, and going over stuff that I have been collecting. Um, I've been um, on One America Network, talk about the coronavirus, and I've been collecting data from uh, reliable sources such as the uh, CDC and WHO, uh, and Virginia, Virginia Department of Health. And this is just unprecedented time. And it's a time for us to really connect and um, to, to let each other know that you're not alone in this. We are connected globally with our brothers and sisters. And what I do know for sure is that um, we, we need to engage and we need to connect with each other that will make each other stronger. I do know that we will come out of this. We are uh, the land of the free and the land of the brave. We will come out of this. Yes, there will be some not so good things that will happen, but we will come out of this and we will come out of this stronger than uh, we were before. And this is a time for us to really get level-headed, to be kind to each other, and to think about the people that are the heroes, which are our first responders and the doctors and nurses and staff uh, at the hospitals that are risking their lives and their lives of their family to take care of uh, us and take care of the uh, people that really needs it. So uh, think about them and think what they have to go through. And I know you hear all this stuff about what they're facing. We'll talk about that um, as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and start uh, here. It looks like we have uh, people joining. So let me know in the chat uh, if you can hear me clearly um or not so um okay all right here we go so like i said this is wild and turbulent time uh i hope you're staying uh, safe and well and uh so covid has has brought with it not only illness but a rush of uncertainty and uniquely we're all in this together and uh we're all and almost everyone in the world is experiencing the same thing and remember, we are globally connected. We're a lot closer than um, a lot of our uh, brothers and uh, our, our brothers and sisters around the world. Thank you for sharing that you can hear me uh, clearly. Hi, Bill. Okay. Um, and there's a lot of fear and anxiety and a lot of unknown. Believe me, I feel like that, and a lot of my colleagues feel like that too. I just want to make sure that we're all in this together and let's uh, hold our hands and go through this. And so one of the trusted source that you really need to look at is the Virginia, Depart the Virginia Department of Health or whatever state you're in, um, the Department of Health and CDC and uh, WHO. So what I did was I gather a lot of the information that goes uh, from these sources as well as uh, the medical literature that I get on a daily basis. And I try to make it some sense out of that and to uh, create a concise source uh, and to, um, uh, to disperse the information um, in a more a sensible and hopeful way, but realistic way. 
So in Virginia, um, this is as of, I believe this morning, it's changing all the time. Um, number of people tested is almost 2,800. Positive cases is about 152. And the most is in Arlington, Fairfax, uh, James City, Loudoun, and Prince William. Hospitalized has been 25, and there are two deaths. And again, um, these numbers are changing. So the disclaimer is that these numbers are probably not even accurate. Uh, and every minute and every day uh, is being updated. And in Fredericksburg, and two hospitals about three to five miles from where my office is at, there actually are seven cases now. And in the U.S., um, at this actually I updated this number. Uh, we have about 26,000 uh, confirmed cases. Last night when I went to bed, uh, when I went to bed, it was around 18,000. In New York, it was 12,000 at this point. Death is 340. In the U.S., it's the sixth in the world for confirmed cases. And global, and uh, this number has actually may even gone up since the last time I looked. 304,000 confirmed cases, and death is, is almost 13,000. Uh, 13, so what is this coronavirus and what, what is, uh, is it all about? And this is the picture I know you see a lot. These are um, what they call the glycoprotein. These those folks that you see on here. The, um, the virus is this, and inside of it, it has a very single, single strand of what you call RNA which is um, uh, um, different than on uh, DNA. Um, the, the DNA is transcribed into an RNA. It has one single strand and uh, it is a new mutation. So what that means is that it has mutated, before it was used to be transmitted from bat to uh, uh, animal. And then now, and then in, in uh, Wuhan, China, it was transmitted from animal to human. And now it's going human to human. So it's a new trans, a mutation, and um, and we still are finding more about it. And um, so it's now transmitting from human to human. And I'll talk about more about this. And so I wanted to make sure that you kind of create a picture of what we all need to look, be looking at here. So what are the myths? I want to start with the myth first and end on a positive uh, note. And these are information that I gather from the WHO website, which is a lot of good information. And you can actually be overwhelmed uh, by looking at the site. And, and um, I was trying to put it all together. So um, what are the myths? The myths, uh, first myth is the virus will uh, die off once temperature rises. It is a new virus. Well, we're, uh, we're not sure how it acts. But the, you know, if we think that the temperature rises, it will die, we're not sure. Um, keep that in mind. Drinking water every 15 minutes. Well, that's a myth also. It's good to stay hydrated and well rested, but drinking and gargling is, will not flush out the virus through your body, nor uh, if it gets to your stomach, will flush it out. Uh, the mask protect against the virus. Uh, only for those that are infected, the virus can grow to the regular mass. Um, only the N95 should be reserved for the healthcare workers who are in the front line. Now, if you walk, if you're not infected and you're well and you're walking around with just a plain mask, that's not going to protect you either. The N95 mask is about three micron, um, uh, um, but the uh, virus is one micron, even though it's a little bit bigger. It's just that it is a, it's a lot of them and they can't go through that small hole. So that's why the N95 mask is five times more protective than just a regular uh, mask. But the N95 mask should be reserved for the healthcare workers who are taking care of sick people instead of um, ourselves. And please, if you do have some N95 masks, um, donate that to your local hospital. So COVID-19 can actually mutate to a deadlier strain. That's a myth. All, vi all viruses mutate. Some of the mutation um, is, uh, it can occur and it can even make it less virulent or less potent. And another myth is hot water to wash your hands will get germs off better than cold water. Well, soap and water is the best approach. Wash your hands for 20 seconds and we hear that all the time. The temperature of the water does not matter, uh, but the mechanical scrubbing of the soap is what cleans your hands. I actually did a video on 
how to wash your hands and I'll post that. Essentially what happened is that soap is alkaline. So when you wash your hands with soap and, and you have the virus, what it does is the soap essentially um, go through the cell membrane of the virus, essentially bursting them open. Does so the cell membrane, the virus is lipophilic and it doesn't like soap and you can literally kill it on the spot by washing your hands for uh, 20 seconds, at least 20 seconds, which is singing happy birthday uh, two times. That's why you keep hearing about it because simple, but it does uh, work. Next is cold water. Um, cold water can kill the coronavirus. Not true. Your body temperature. Uh, this I hear people say, well, drink cold water and and that will, that will lower your body temperature. That's not true. No matter what, your body temperature is always maintained at 97.7 to 98.6 degrees, regardless of the external temperature. Another myth is coronavirus can be transmitted through mosquito bites. Um, the transmission is actually through droplets from an infected person who cough or sneeze or through saliva or discharge from the nose. Another myth is spraying alcohol and chlorine all over your body will kill the virus. Well, um, it, it can dry up. It, this, by doing this, you can actually dry up your mucous membrane, and that can probably be easier for, for the virus to enter your body. Um, another myth is rinsing your nose with saline will uh, draw the virus. It has not been shown to fight infection. Uh, it may help to have you recover quickly if you have uh, nasal congestion. Eating garlic help prevent infection. There's no evidence to show this. Uh, the hand dryer is more effective than killing the virus. That, it hasn't been shown to, to uh, show this either. Next myth is the thermal scanner can detect someone with infection. Well, only someone that has a fever that has an active infection with the uh, coronavirus. But remember, it can also be the flu, and we'll discuss uh, about the flu and the cold and allergies later. Uh, it cannot detect people who are infected, um, who, not, who are not yet sick with fever. It takes about two uh, to 14 days before, someone's ex uh, before, before the symptoms show up if you are exposed. Um, and the spectrum of the, the, um, the presentation of the clinical symptoms of this virus can be asymptomatic. That means you can catch it and you don't have any symptom whatsoever to just a sniffle, to just a, a runny nose, or maybe just a, a dry cough, to severity to even be fatal. So the spectrum is widespread and that you doesn't mean if you don't have a fever, that means you don't have um, the infection. The pneumonia, next method, pneumonia vaccine protect against the coronavirus. The vaccine is only protective against pneumonia, which is caused by a bacterial strain called pneumococcal or haemophilus um, influenza and not the virus itself. Coronavirus, um, the next is coronavirus only affect older people. Well, older people with pre-existing condition are more vulnerable to becoming severely ill, but young people can get it as well. Our recent data in the U.S. shows that um, uh, groups of um, ages between 20 and 50 years old, it's about a third of the cases, they may have milder symptoms, but they can have severe symptoms as well. So don't believe that if you're young, that you're actually immune to that. You may have more, more milder cases, you may have more reserve, and you may have a better immunity versus an older group. So what's the fact from the WHO? COVID-19 can be transmitted in hot and humid weather. Cold weather cannot kill the virus. A hot bath does not prevent an infection either. UV lamp does not kill the virus. Antibiotic is not effective. There are no vaccine yet, and it could take up two months to have a vaccine. There's, most, there's no specific medicine as of yet, but they're looking at chloroquine and some, um, some, um, some dissevere, uh, or some consideration that are coming up. So what are the symptoms of coronavirus versus the other respiratory uh, infection? Is that uh, the number one uh, thing you'll hear a lot is that it's actually the fever. It's the presentation in 83 to 98% of people that are infected. So fever above 100 degrees, and then followed by a dry cough, where 76 to 82% of people infected will present with these symptoms. And then after that is shortness of breath, sometimes a headache, and then aches, body aches uh, and pain. 
and it's a gradual onset. So if you're exposed to somebody that is infected, it can take up to uh, two to 14 days for you to have um, the symptoms. You may even have mild sneezing, sometimes fat uh, fatigue, and diarrhea is very rare. Now, if you just pay attention to the top three, um, which is a dry cough, the fever, and the body aches, and you can differentiate that from uh, flu. But how is allergy different? Well, allergy, you have the runny nose, the sneezing, the red swollen eyes, itchy eyes, itchy nose, and a tickle in your throat, but rarely, rarely a fever. And a cold, you have a runny nose, sneezing, a sore throat, body ache, rarely a fever. You may have a dry cough. And the flu, uh, the fever is common. You also develop a dry cough. It's very quick. You have a headache, you have a sore throat, and fatigue, and sometimes uh, a runny nose. So it has in common with it a fever and a dry uh, cough, but ra rarely it's a shortness um, uh, of breath. So let's go over some, some terminology. What does social distancing mean? What does it really mean uh, at this time? We'll talk about why social distancing work. And so it's really a practice reducing contact between uh, people and it's real, slow down the infection of the disease. And what, the distance is about six feet because we know that um, the um, droplets can travel three feet. So you want to double that distance about six feet. And we all hear about avoiding social gathering, uh, uh, concerts and theater, athletic event and, cra uh, and crowded retail stores, malls, the, the gym, uh, visitors and non-essential workers in your house and mass transit, uh, caution would go on to a restaurant, grocery store, uh, picking up medication um, and uh, playing tennis in the park. I played tennis in the park about a week ago, uh, but we kept our distance and uh, church services and traveling. What's safe to do is what I do every day. And you can see me wearing my workout clothes um, that I'm going to do later on is take a walk and uh, go for a hike and yard work, play in your yard, uh, clean out the closet. This is a, the a time is our precious commodity and our, our best, um, that you have more time now than ever. Uh, work on cleaning out the garage, your house, uh, read a good book, listen to music, learn how to cook, do family game night. Um, the other day, uh, a, a week ago, uh, we, I play some games with my kids with, um, uh, Twisters and Connect Four and Monopoly. I haven't played in decades and it's really given us a chance to connect again and um, explore, um, um, to, uh, talk to each other more. Um, go for a drive in your car, do video chat and um, stream your favorite show and check on a friend and that especially check on your elderly neighbor who may need your help. And this is when we step up as, um, as a human being and, and look into our humanity. This is a time where we look beyond ourselves and take care of the people that are really needed at this point. So what does self-quarantine mean? Self-quarantine means 14 days of, um, of, of quarantine. Um, essentially, if you've been exposed to somebody that has a coronavirus or who are at risk for coming down with COVID-19, this is when you should self-quarantine. Um, use standard hygiene and washing your hands frequently. Uh, not sharing your towels or utensils. Stay at home. Not having visitors. Stay at least six feet away from other people in your household. Once your quarantine is over, and if you do not have symptoms, follow your doctor's instructions on how to return to normal routine. Now, it would be nice if we had kits that can test us and make sure that uh, you are testing negative before you are back again. But at, currently at this time, we don't have enough kits for everyone. So what's isolation? Isolation is when you do have a confirmed uh, COVID-19 from the test kit, you stay at home or uh, if you have mild symptoms or at the hospital if you have severe symptoms. Uh, severe symptoms mean that at the hospital, if you have shortness of breath or lethargy or chest pain, that you require uh, intensive um, evaluation and care and maybe be on, uh, neb uh, on continuous uh, ventilation support or continuous nebulizer support um, and that you are in isolation and uh, 
people taking care of you must wear personal protective equipment. So what do you do if you feel sick? Uh, step one, stay at home and call your doctor. Uh, do not go to ER unless you have severe shortness of breath, chest pain, or lethargy. Reduce your risk of spreading the illnesses. Do not go to work. Do not go to public places. And avoid public transportation. If your symptoms are severe and you need medical care, call before you go to the doctor's office or urgent care or ER and, and tell them uh, how you're feeling. So that way they can prepare an isolation room for you and they can prepare themselves to have personal prote uh, protective equipment. I'll show you a picture of what that is. Step two, answer a question uh, to, uh, uh, to your doctor about your risk. Have you had close contact with somebody diagnosed with COVID-19? Um, ha um, the, have the disease that causes coronavirus? Have you been exposed to somebody within six feet? Uh, do you have a fever, a, a cough, or difficulty breathing? Has the public health officer said you were um, potentially exposed? Step three, follow your doctor's instruction. You will be told if you need evaluation, and if so, what to do next. Based on your risk for COVID, you may be recommended to continue to monitor your health and call back when you develop a fever or respiratory symptom. Stay at home and await further instructions. Report to a designated medical facility for evaluation and treatment. It's best to go alone to your appointment. Do not bring your children or family members unless you need assistance. Go to the clinic or emergency department if you have more severe symptoms, such as a high fever or shortness of breath. Step four, hand hygiene and respiratory etiquette. If you do leave your home, go to the uh, care facility, wear a mask, so your cough and sneeze are less likely to infect others. Um, the masks are not recommended for healthy people in the general population, however. Now wash your hands thoroughly after sneezing or blowing your nose or coughing or using the bathroom before preparing to, or, or, or even before eating food. If you cough or sneeze, do so in the bend of your elbow, not in your hand. Use a tissue, then throw it away afterward. At home, clean often surfaces such as doors and doorknobs, cabinet handles, bathroom hardware, tabletop, phone, tablets, keyboard uh, with uh, disinfectants such as either Clorox or bleach or hydrogen peroxide. And stay calm. Doctors and hospitals are working hard to take care of you. And while you want to stay calm because you don't want to spread this illness to the community, and we'll talk more about that. So what's per, per, uh, personal protective equipment? This is what it looks like. Um, it's a special uh, uh, mask here. This is the N95 mask here with goggles and the gown that you would wear as if you were going to go uh, uh, do uh, uh, surgery. This is another type of mask uh, with face shields as well. So this is the ventilator. This is what we hear on the press about what uh, that they're they're making more ventilators support people that require respiratory support. And this is what help you breathe when you cannot breathe on your own or when you need assistance in breathing on your own. Uh, for instance, the, the virus caused pneumonia, which is essentially an infection in your lung. And what that causes is that it produces fluid in your lung and then your the alveoli, which are the um, kind of like uh, the, um, the area of the lung that, uh, that exchange oxygen collapse. So you have less lung tissue to get your oxygen from. So you work harder to breathe. So you, your respiration rate uh, goes up and then your heart rate goes up and it becomes harder and harder for you to uh, work to bring in more oxygen to your body. So if you on the respirator, it helps you breathe. So it's kind of like the respirator is kind of like an electric uh, bicycle. It help you bike up that hill when you have a hard time biking up the hill. And so this is the respirator. And then this person has a tube uh, in his nose to help him, um, him breathe here. So ways uh, to boost uh, your immunity. Um, and let's talk about this a little bit further. Is that, uh, you know, no smoking. Uh, if you're smoking, smoke less because obviously smoking is gonna impair your respiratory status and it's gonna uh, decrease your uh, immunity. And all of these uh, here is to increase your, uh, decrease your inflammation and trying to increase your antioxidant. 
So that way uh, you can have the reserve to um, um, fight an inflammatory response. An infection causes an inflammatory response. And uh, fruits, uh, eat more fruits and vegetables, fruits such as blueberry, raspberry, uh, vegetables. Um, exercise regularly, like walking, hiking, biking. I'm lucky enough to live um, in the battlefield where I have 17 miles of um, a battlefield to walk every day and I take advantage of that. Um, do meditation outside. Uh, next is uh, get enough sleep, uh, at least seven hours. And, and I like this part, take naps. You know, uh, naps are great. Um, and it, it uh, relaxes you and it actually um, increase your energy. Now, now is the time to take those naps that you've always wanted to take. You're too busy to have time for it. We know that vitamin C is an antioxidant, vitamin B6, vitamin E, and zinc and selenium and vitamin D. Uh, nuts like Brazil nuts have a lot of selenium uh, in it. And vitamin D is very, very important for cellular function. Drink at least 80, uh, 64 ounces of water daily. Um, and, uh, minimize uh, alcohol. Uh, alcohol can lower your body temperature and can actually lower your uh, immunity. Uh, blueberries is very good. Uh, dark chocolate, uh, don't eat too much of it. Uh, you know, a couple of squares um, a day is good. And, um, uh, and so that will also increase your um, um, antioxidant. Turmeric is also uh, uh, good as well. Eat oily fish. Uh, I've, I've been cooking a lot more fish uh, at home and eat more broccoli and eat uh, sweet potatoes and spinach. It's my misspelling uh, here. Uh, and uh, ginger is a great uh, antioxidant, as well as the probiotic. I can't stress probiotic um, enough. Uh, probiotic is, uh, what it does is that it um, provides bacteria into your gut. And um, your, your gut is really the gateway uh, of immunity, uh, protecting yourself. And um, a probiotic will help um, uh, colonize your gut and the bacteria will help uh, increase your uh, immunity and eat fermented food like kimchi, sauerkraut, drink kombucha. Uh, intermittent fasting has been shown to actually um, um, e uh, increase your um, uh, immunity as well. Uh, fasting for about 16 uh, hours and eat um, the other um, eight hours and then meditation. Uh, there are a, a lot of apps that you can uh, sign up for free, and it only takes about 10 minutes a day. This is a time where you need to be calm. You need to um, take in deep breathing. When you take deep breathing with meditation, it actually clears the lungs. It, it will um, get rid of all the, and any um, debris, and it actually will help you. Spending family time, which I uh, enjoy. My, both my kids are, are home from uh, uh, college and grad school. And that, uh, that is a time that you know, we didn't have before. And now we uh, treasure that and we spend um, time as much as possible. And think about getting a Myers or vitamin C IV therapy, which can uh, load you up with uh, antioxidant um, uh, quickly. And it, what it does is that the vitamin C and the vitamin uh, in the Myers, such as uh, calcium and uh, selenium and, and magnesium go to your veins, which goes straight to your cells, bypassing your gut and bypassing your uh, intestine uh, to give the cells what they need to uh, function. And um, I posted this because on the um, news yesterday, uh, President, uh, Vice President Pence keeps showing this card and you can find this on uh, coronavirus.gov, uh, 15 days to slow the spread of the, uh, of the illness. So let's go over some facts and answer some common questions. In 1918 flu pandemic, uh, it killed 25 million people in 25 weeks. Just know that we've never, we have never been better prepared to fight the pandemic than we are now. And I'll, show, and I'll talk about why. Let's talk about the flu a little bit. A lot of people say, well, uh, you know, more people die of the flu than of the coronavirus at this time. What's the big deal? 
Um, I want to go over some facts about the flu. Um, and from this is from the data from the CDC from the, the 2019 to, uh, to 2020. And so um, as you can see here, this is a uh, flu type uh, A and flu type uh, uh, B uh, here. And this is all the way up to um, February uh, here. So what it shows is that you have a, a, about number of positive uh, infection about, you know, 22, uh, thousand uh, here, and which is a um, you know of so far from this is from actually 2019, and so the flu is you um in the U.S. is about 38 million cases, and uh, the, uh, hospitalization is um almost to 400 thousand hospitalization, and then you have about 23 thousand deaths and 149 deaths in children. Um, we have a vaccine, however, to mitigate this uh, illness, and we also have antiviral medication for the flu. We've known about the flu for years, and we know what it acts like. That's, this is an interesting uh, slide that I found that I wanted to share, is that there's a picture of somebody that never, that they look at people that never have uh, the flu shot, and then uh, the one that do have the flu shot. So essentially, if you never had the flu shot, you have a 7% chance in 38 years of not catching the flu. You have a 50-50 chance of catching the flu in 11 years. Versus if you have the flu shot, your chance of catching the flu is a lot less. So bottom line is you probably should think about uh, getting a flu shot. Now the flu shot isn't going to uh, protect you against the coronavirus, but it'll protect you against the flu. So what is the big deal if the infection and death rate is less uh, than, what's the big deal if the infection and death rate is less than the flu right now, well, it is a big deal. We, we need to be prepared. We need to be um, um, know what's going on. The coronavirus is the new virus. It, we have no immunity. We know a lot about the flu for years. Um, that doesn't mean that, um, that the, so the coronavirus could really be infecting the whole world. Right now, we have a 7.8 billion of people of our brothers and sisters worldwide. And none of us have developed the immunity uh, to it. We are still finding out about the coronavirus. It's a wild card. There's a lot of unknowns. We only know about it for about three months now. We have to know that this, the unknown is where it is um, uh, serious. It, yes, it does affect the elderly more, uh, more severely. Um, if what happens is that if they get all sick at once, it's going to overwhelm the healthcare uh, system. And that's what the concern is. And that's what we'll talk about flattening the curve. Uh, the clinical presentation uh, of coronavirus spectrum is wide. You can range from no symptom to severe to, um, so in fact, uh, to uh, fatal. And um, if you, know, you do not know that you have symptoms, you can actually spread it uh, to the community, particularly spread it to the people that are most susceptible, like the one the elderly and the one that is immunocompromised. Yeah, we know that it's more infectious than the flu. And we know that flu is seasonal. When the weather warms up, it's gonna get decreased. But we don't know about the coronavirus. If the weather warms up, it's gonna die down. The um, infection uh, rate, this is important in that when you have the flu, the person that's infected can transmit it to one another person. And the, the data has come out about coronavirus that if someone with coronavirus has it, uh, that person can infect up to two or three people. Um, and um, the fatality for the flu is 0.1%. The coronavirus fatality is unclear. It could be higher or it, uh, or it could be the same. In China, it's about 1.4% to 2.3%. Um, this is of all age group. It is higher in the elderly. And um, what, what uh, uh, we need to think about is, uh, does each country react the same to this virus? Uh, we, we have differences in our diet. We have differences in our obesity rate, our environment, and genetic. So does China have this rate? Does that mean that we will have similar rate uh, as well? And if I talk about this one but before is that the fatality rate is calculated number of infection 
which is the numerator. I mean, I'm sorry, the numerator is um, the number of deaths and, and the denominator is number of infection. We know that probably the number of infection of people is a lot higher. Right now, this, this number right here is being calculated with the number of confirmed uh, cases with the kit. Uh, but the denominator is gonna be a lot more because there are many people that have the coronavirus that has not been tested. And um, that could lower the fatality rate to probably less than this number. We just don't know. Um, at this point, and we have to consider is the U.S. going to be different than China or Italy, and how do we come out of this? So the CDC expects widespread transmission. Uh, then they do know that the fatality rate is probably more than the flu, but we don't know what. So I'm just going to put down some numbers there, and this is why you see a lot of concern, um, of, of concern um, about you know. Um, transmission and um, 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 you know, flattening the curve. Let's say, for example, we have 332 million Americans. If we are infected, and let's say the fatal rate is, is, I'm making it less than the flu, the flu is 0.1. If the fatal rate is 0.05% to the flu, 0.1%, that means that 166,000 to 332,000 uh, fatal cases. If you increase it to a little bit above the flu, which is 0.15%, it's gonna come out to almost half a million fatal cases. And in the worst scenario, if you're saying about 1%, like in uh, China, uh, you're looking at about 3 million uh, cases. So that's a lot, big number right now. So we can look at, be looking at from this number to this number in fatal cases. So what does it mean? What does this curve uh, mean? And you see this a lot and you hear about flattening the curve. Well, this is a pandemic outbreak with no intervention. So we wanna slow down the uh, acceleration of the number of cases. And how do we do that? We, uh, we do that by uh, social, uh, social uh, distancing. Uh, we do that. And how do we, uh, this, the reason why we wanna bring this down is we wanna decrease the number of cases and the demands in the hospital system and the infrastructure. So you, we want this right here. We want to reduce the number of overall cases uh, here so the hospital can take care of us. If everybody shows up at this time, the hospital and, uh, and the doctors cannot take care of everybody here, but they can take care of, if, of uh, uh, sick people if they trickle in uh, gradually and not at a peak right here. So this, this is where you want to be so that way we, we don't have the fatal cases like we have. The, and this is what we, we want to look like with a pandemic outbreak with intervention. So what's the number uh, of people? This is another, uh, and I want to describe this in that this is the time from the first infection. This is how, why we do social distancing. We, should, we do this so that we can bring down the number of infection down, so that way it is below the healthcare capacity. By slowing it down and flattening it, we're, we're not decreasing the, the number, uh, we're decreasing the number of cases. We're postponing many, many cases until we get a vaccine, until we get a treatment. We're just lowering this part right here. We don't want this to happen because we're buying time. We're buying time for vaccination. We're buying time for treatment. So what can you do to help ensuring that the public is aware uh, of the seriousness of COVID-19 and uh, be, sol uh, be, um, be um, the high degree of population understanding and solidarity and applying strict personal hygiene and coughing uh, etiquette and having community engagement and acceptance of the social distancing. And then you want to understand that, yeah, you want to understand that we, we want to help the hospital system by um, so the social distancing and hygiene care because we want to slow the demand for specialized health care such as ICU beds and the demand for ventilator. You want to safeguard population vulnerable to severe outcome. You want to protect the health care workers that provide your care and you want to minimize um, the export of cases to other health care facilities and community. So 10 reasons not to panic. I want to end on a positive note. It is, it is a serious issue. And it is a pandemic. 
and pandemic is, is um, defined as sustained and continuous transmission, but not the lethal, uh, lethality uh, is not lethal at this point. Uh, so you want to plan for the worst case scenario, but there are 10 things that you need to look at. Some optimism. We know what it is. When AIDS came out in 1981, it took two years to identify the HIV virus. The COVID-19, it appeared in China in December 2019. By July 7, 2020, the virus has been identified and the, D and the RNA genome was identified by January uh, 17. We know that coronavirus is from the SARS family called SARS-CoV-2 and the disease is called COVID-19. And it's related to the coronavirus from bat. And it, we know that, that corona, uh, uh, the, uh, this family here, its mutation rate may not be very high. So number two, we know how to detect the virus by January 13 by a uh, testing kit. And number three, the situation is improving in China. Um, how they do that is by uh, physical distancing or social distancing. I like that term better. Uh, physical distancing, isolation, more treatment in ICU and, and uh, detection. Uh, as of March 20th, and I believe including today, three days in a row, they have no new cases in China. Uh, that is, uh, uh, it is um, um, organic, but there, uh, there seem to be some export uh, cases in China. And the outbreak is very specific to certain area. And um, knowing that, you can, you can easily control the outflow. More optimism, 80% of the cases are mild. We know that this is about a 17% cure rate. So that's great, you know, if you catch it, 17, you have 17 uh, times of coming out of this. And the fatal rate is probably less than 1%. Uh, like, like I talked uh, before, that the number of the people that are infected that are, that are not showing symptoms, or maybe, maybe a lot more than um, is calculated at this time. And the symptoms are mild in children. It can go unnoticed. And there have been, I believe, about seven to 10 pregnant uh, uh, women uh, in China and, uh, with the condition and the babies were delivered without coronavirus infection. And the virus can be killed by wiping uh, with alcohol, uh, hydrogen peroxide, and 0.1% bleach. And it's killed in one minute. And we know that we can kill the virus with soap and water. More optimism, science is on it. Everyone is on it globally. 164 articles have been written in one month on vaccine, genetic, treatment, clinical aspect, epidemiology and diagnosis. There's, there is a global cooperative movement in, uh, uh, about this uh, uh, coronavirus. Uh, it's shared and it's open. The scientific journals are open access on the, on the subject coronavirus. Uh, compared to SARS in 2003, it took a year for 80 articles or half the amount of articles to come out that would come out right now. And th there are vaccine prototypes and may soon be tested on human, but that is uh, um, takes some time. Anti uh, antiviral trials are underway. Uh, as of March uh, 15, 2020, uh, I believe Kaiser and Washington State is testing out some uh, uh, antivirals uh, at this time. There are right now 80 clinical trials analyzing the coronavirus uh, medication as remdesivir um, is now being considered that medication being used against the Ebola virus and SARS and MERS. Uh, chloroquine, we, we hear President Trump talk about that. It's an anti-malarial uh, drug. It blocked the replication um, by increasing the pH of the endosome, which is needed for the virus to enter the cells. And then there's another medication, Oseltavir, which is a medication used for uh, influenza, interferon 1B, and then anti-serum from people who have recovered or, or antibodies uh, to neutralize the virus. And I wanted to men mention this. I just saw this on, um, through one of my email is that um, Harvard is uh, offering this uh, uh, free uh, course uh, to, uh, to on the topic of how to be happier in your daily life. And I put this uh, link on here. You want to take a picture of it. It's a free course. And um, I think it may be useful in this time. And well, all, all we have is time. So we are all in this uh, together. 
the uh, it can be overwhelming, but every person can help slow down the spread of COVID by doing your, your part. And you can make a big difference in your health and that of other people. So together we are stronger and together we can achieve this together. So it's now open for uh, questions and um, I hope that was uh, useful. So um, any uh, questions uh, at all at this time? You can type it in the chat section. So let me uh, just kind I I okay. Here's from my uh, uh, my friend Alex uh, from uh, Richmond EO. Hi Alex. How long would it take to resolve? How, and he asked, how long would it take to resolve in your estimate? I assume uh, I assume you said resolve um, resolve as in the um, how long will this um, so, um, quarantine uh, last? Well because in um, uh, we talked about remember that picture I show about us uh, uh, let me um, let me bring this chat box to over here because we you have to see the downturn of the, um, the number of new cases um, to look at this picture you have to you have we have to see the downturn of new cases in order for the quarantine um, uh, to be released. So we, we, are right, we, don't, we are probably right now here. We haven't even reached our peak yet. We have to see the downturn right here in order for uh, quarantine uh, uh, to be uh, lifted. So how long will it take? I, 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 from what I hear, it's gonna take more than two weeks. Uh, I hear numbers such as a month to uh, two months, but we have to see the downturn of um, we have to see the downturn of uh, the number of new cases to know that social distancing is uh, working. Um, how, did I answer your question, Alex? And he also asked, um, what are potential solutions? We know by looking at China and South Korea, uh, what are they doing to uh, lowering the number of cases and, uh, and to uh, prevent new cases is early detection with uh, making more kits um, available and um, not uh, overcrowding the healthcare system. Uh, what, what, uh, what South Korea is doing is that they're, they have uh, kits available, they have hospital beds available, they have ventilator available, and they are practicing uh, very strict social distancing. And that's what's bringing down the curve. And that's what we can do is social distancing and do not crowd the, uh, the healthcare system uh, at this time. Um, and so, hi, Vicki. Uh, and so, um, yeah, the, how does IV therapy uh, help? Uh, IV uh, therapy actually uh, create, uh, will uh, induce an anti-inflammatory, um, um, will, will produce anti-inflammation effect to decrease inflammation. So. Uh, that's what an infection is. An infection goes to your, your body and cause your body to mount this high massive immune system that uh, overload your body to fight it and uh, giving yourself some uh, anti-inflammation will help with that. I have seen in several of my patients and I, I've seen it in uh, my husband as well when he was coming down with the flu about uh, six months, uh, about, I don't know, four months ago. Um, and that has helped him uh, recover. All right, that's from Pamela. Uh, you mentioned being cautious when you go to the store. Since you indicated a mask is not necessary, what else besides using sanitizer and washing your hands and social distancing should people do? Um, thank you, uh, Pamela, for the compliment. Um, you know, that's a great question. Um, you can wear a glove. Make sure when you, you bring your, um, um, your sanitizer and wipe uh, the, the cart and you wear a glove and uh, don't bring your, uh, your hand to your face. Um, I saw this, uh, uh, I was reading something that in one day, we can bring our hand to our face at least a hundred times, which is 
pretty interesting, you know? I mean, I do that without thinking about it uh, as well. I went to the grocery store a couple of days ago and um, I uh, just washed a bar handle. I didn't bring my hand to my face. I uh, was not near anyone and everyone was very respectful of the, the physical uh, um, space. And um, I made sure not to bring my hand to my face. So that's all we can do uh, at this time. All right, next is, uh, would you continue going to appointment like, like if I have a heart doctor visit or should I cancel or go later? Uh, and dentist appointment like that, if they are routine yearly uh, physical. I, if, if, if things are elective, uh, postpone it, Rob. Uh, postpone it for at least um, um, a couple of months if it's uh, elective. I don't know if you guys know, but the dentists um, have been advised uh, by the Virginia Dental Association to close their office for two weeks uh, because when they do procedures or just dental cleaning, the, the, there's aerosolized droplets in the air that remains, and it's a risk for the patient and their staff and, uh, as well. So they, they have been closed for the last two weeks. So I, I don't know if that's going to go beyond that at this point. So I would suggest anything elective is to schedule it uh, for later. Um, next is, uh, will this PowerPoint be available after? I want my husband to read it. He is not at home. Uh, yes, I, I have recorded this and I'm also, this is also on Facebook Live. So I will uh, definitely uh, be posting it um, and also sending it to your email uh, as well too. So I'm glad you find it uh, to be uh, helpful. All right, any other questions? Any other question, Alex? Did I answer your question? Well, I will uh, try to do this uh, once a week and just kind of giving you update kind of, uh, and from a doctor perspective on how to give you more factual information that uh, I know um, that I know come from uh, credible uh, sources um, and uh, to keep us all engaged and to keep us all um, connected together and uh, we are not alone and together we we can uh, hold our, each other hand to know that we're in this together we will come out much better we went to 9-11 um, and and that was unprecedented and so are we in this situation so I thank you all for uh, coming and listening to uh, this webinar and I will see you soon. Thank you.